huge thank you to the as of writing 493 patrons supporting this series and the channel itself one day i'd love 600 with that number it wouldn't even matter if youtube demonetized me i'd be 100 percent fan funded if you'd like to support please check out my patreon links below and help keep one piece and anime wins alive into the future thank you so much everyone <laughs> It's a brand new part, unless you're watching a future compilation, and thus I'm dropping a win for amazing voice acting from Chopper, utterly in love with it, funny too. <laughs> Luffy says that so creepily, it's like a horror movie. <laughs> Chopper effortlessly showing a lot about himself by stating this, clearly concerned for Luffy and his health as a doctor, even though he's being irritating to him in his mind anyway. <laughs> we got that creepy factor dialed in with that door opening like that, but the wide screen was the best. I can't get over the voice acting if I'm being 100% real, I'm borderline obsessed. They've been cranking out some real unique looking transitions over the last couple parts. I said it in the last part but it feels worthwhile highlighting it again. The animation on Chopper feels a little different but looks fantastic to me. How is this such a consistently great callback? A sad showcasing of how badly he was treated when searching for this special mushroom and coming across some of his old flock. <laughs> Two wins here, Chopper fighting back at last, but also them getting the sounds of them spot on too. We are <laughs> The stark similarities on display here between his words and what Little Chopper is trying to do for him out there. <laughs> Can take Max wins for that. The lengths he went to to get that mushroom breaks my heart. How injured he is walking in and saying sorry for losing his favourite book. Man oh man, this story... <laughs> <laughs> oh, straight to my heart! I can fight like a pirate too! <laughs> Take one more for this because even though we know it's not likely to be a magic cure given that he's no longer around, it meant a lot to see them like this at the end. <laughs> To see him smiling like that whilst being embraced, all he wanted in the world. This is nicely added to let us know that he saw them that day and clearly ignored them. Already here, he decided in his heart to not follow all of the orders of his king. Him getting such a nice thank you for what he did deserves one too. Fills me with such warmth. Oh, even the way he says, what's that? It's so cute, it hurts. That was lovely to see as well, because he'd been called an idiot and a quack for so long, but he knew he could do this, and that all came bursting out here. At some point, I gotta stop, I know that, but Chopper is so cute and adorable in moments like these, I cannot help myself right now! I got an awful feeling this may suddenly end up being the last proper words they're able to share, and so I felt inclined to give him one for coming back to tell him this. Understanding how he came to be with her, but what struck me the most is how by what he's saying, you understand that clearly the mushroom isn't a cure-all in the end. More sad than I thought I'd be here. Ah, <laughs> 
just a nice little moment that showed that he did know her very well in the end, since he knew she'd take over his training when he passed. Ah, now I'm starting to understand more of what may have ended up happening to him. God, this story is great and can be utterly unpredictable a lot of the time. Why the hell can't Chopper catch a single break in this anime? Dear Lord, just when I'm thinking there's literally no reason she could have to hurt him, this happens and it beautifully plays into win number 2234. I can't believe that. It gets worse. The reason why he thought it would be a cure roll. I'm guessing the doctor felt that, given how much time he had left and how hurt Chopper was getting it, plus how it treated him, that he'd eat it. That music and this statement for me bring everything back to reality. This isn't a fantasy type world with a magic mushroom that cures literally everything. <laughs> That really did evolve into just a beautiful piece of music to accompany the sadness being shared between them. <laughs> this poor man tried to use the last of his time in this world to try and save the doctors he thought were ill, only to find out about the ruse. It's actually something comforting that in the end, he was happy to know that the country wasn't doomed to sickness and he didn't really care about the lie. Now I know why I said that's a beautiful song, because it really is one. I love Ave Maria. Perfect fit here. <laughs> It's been nothing short of wonderful seeing how what he did this day and the words he said had such a profound effect on him. Referring to Chopper <clears throat> as his son made everything worthwhile to me in the end. That's what he meant to him. That's how he felt about him. His son. <laughs> Naturally, all of that requires another Max wins. He refused to allow the poison mistakenly given to him by Chopper to end his life, taking it himself in the process. What a beautiful, incredible series of sad events. <laughs> Two wins. Firstly, seeing what Chopper is capable of when he loses his mind, very naturally here in the aftermath. But also another one for the stunning looking animation on the transformation itself. <laughs> Dalton being the guy we knew he'd be and stepping up to ensure that the Doctor's last wishes are granted. True legend he is. <laughs> Already you could see that he had chosen to not see him as a king anymore, worthy of being followed, purely for the title and his own. I'm so glad we were able to see this. <laughs> Chopper taking this brave stance to try and honour the man who named him and saw him as his son. Don't... So... Seeing both her taking him on and also Dalton's end until the country was attacked. So all in all, this makes for a brilliant and informative, albeit heartbreaking flashback in the end. The end of the episode arriving just in time for this moment. A perfectly timed episode, really, and of course a pivotal moment for pretty much everyone inside there. Also worth pointing out is how great it is that it naturally took a long time for them to get up there, allowing for the crew to get some much needed healing in time for the fight. Ping. Huh? 
I feel like this nicely links into what the Doctor was saying at the end about only really dying when you've been forgotten and so Chopper honours his legacy like this. <laughs> First of all, that run at the very start was unique and good looking, but most of all, it's the logical reaction from all of them after recalling who Luffy was from their first meeting. I liked that. <laughs> Seeing their collective reactions to the sheer power of Luffy. <laughs> I love how this stuff is kept in mind and not forgotten about because Sanji was knocked out when Luffy ran into them before. There was something inherently creepy about how casual he was here about wanting to hurt them now. I'm not sure this joke either has any diminishing returns. <laughs> I love that more than words could describe. <laughs> That's such a great joke. <laughs> Chopper finally understanding that the word itself doesn't have to be a bad thing, and when they use it, that certainly isn't the case at all. Hearing this made me smile too, so it's even more important of a location than we first thought. It's being treated as a respectful grave to that awesome dude. I enjoy seeing these little, albeit brief moments, showing life between them. <laughs> Credit to her being able to change her voice like this, but the majority of the win is for how utterly badass he looked in this moment. Get in! <laughs> You've got to admire her consistency when it comes to dishing out a smack for calling her a grandma or old or whatever. Hey, hey. That save right there and Sanji taking over all the cool guy duties for a bit. That statement right there totally gets one as well. I laughed way harder at that than I thought I would. I cannot impress upon you how much I adore these conversations. It's so casual and effortless, talking about how cool her jacket is that she's lending him, and he's so easily convinced by her. Not running on the cool looking jacket spot! Yet another new and unique afro related ability at that! <laughs> Definitely not a new one, but you get the point. Okay. Getting to see Chopper in a fight for the first time, he's gonna fit the crew nicely soon. <laughs> Firstly, it's really cool to see Sanji worrying about Chopper and the need to quickly save him, and the other half of the win is for putting together the attack so quick and the attack itself being sick. Clever way to keep him up there after those two attacks. First time he's caught by his men, and second time he's knocked into his doggo thingy, then that goes flying off. The first time Chopper pays any of the crew a compliment, so you know he means it. I've said this before, but I'm consistently impressed by how Oda gave them a power and then made various different uses for it, such as this here, and when he ate his way out of the snow earlier. Luffy continuing to be super impressed by his enemies doing something cool won't ever not get a win. Unexpected! It's definitely kind of funny looking, but you can't deny that it doesn't also super align with win number 2275. Oh god. <laughs> I'm legit leaving in the last win, and purely because it genuinely felt as though Sanji was saying that to me in reference to the last win. Sanji! 
even those sound effects from Chopper sound perfect. Whoa! Seeing slow mo Luffy getting pissed! Showing quite the high number of abilities this episode as he runs underneath small and immediately turns huge for an attack. <laughs> Knowing that whilst living under such oppression that he still didn't hate the king and felt he and everyone else needed curing says so much about him and clearly it imparted upon Chopper too. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've seen anime where people chat during battles and everyone just remains still. Oda is like one of the goats for anti-anime stuff as I call it, as Chopper is attacked here. Oi, huh? Luffy going up there and fixing the flag for him like a real brother. <laughs> My god he's awesome during moments like these isn't he? Times like these are what makes me really care for the guy because he doesn't even know anything about the flag other than that it's so important to Chopper. <laughs> Decent follow up to a win from back in part 10 when I mentioned about how when Luffy gets serious it can really affect his enemies just like this. <laughs> That little panning shot but mainly seeing the moments that mean so much to me meaning so much to him at the same time. Likely very much changing his opinion on joining them and what it means to be a pirate. <laughs> For me this was a clever technique to keep Sanji out of most of the fight. It really needed to be about Chopper with Luffy aiding him to my mind and all three of them would likely crush those three. Between that animation on him running at the guy and Luffy planting that flag, easy peasy win. Although it might seem simple, these guys had to perfectly sync their words, their speed and their tone and did an amazing job to be quite frank. Him getting to hear these all important words to him for the first time. That was brilliant, a physical manifestation of what it means to be a nakama to someone as he launches himself at their collective foes. Him still showing that concern for his well-being, but also just being shocked at what Luffy is able to do at the same time. Again, there's that realism. I love Jojo, but in that anime it had been 100% back to normal by the next scene. But in this one, wounds persist through the episodes and even arcs. She's good to keep him down too. I believe learning his full name for the first time. Tracking good voice acting. That great little facial expression change when he mentions them being Wapol's personal doctors, which personally I'm guessing is making him suspicious of their motives. So good! It's a consistent win and here we are again. These were the first people to look uniform in how they looked and now, classic to One Piece, they take off their gear and each one looks different to the next. <laughs> Now that's what I like. His passing had meaning not only to Dalton, but to these doctors as well. He's really never going to be forgotten about, and not just by Chopper and Dalton. That was so random, it just had to score a win, really. This physical showcasing of what he can do was really enjoyable to me because it showed me that he can be small, he can be very fast, and he can be huge and strong. What a combo! And then he only goes and adds some extra abilities like being able to jump super high and defend really well, likely due to the ball, but who cares? 
Madanga! <laughs> Luffy not even needed to say Sugoi now, as we know the sound alone. I really like that because it means in the crew he wouldn't just be a doctor, he'd also be doing research into things like he's talking about here. <laughs> it 100% made my day to know that Sanji and likely the rest of the crew are as aware of this trait from Luffy as I've been. Another one of his transformations, and this one is super good on attack, as he easily smashes their weapon. Also though, take one here for the first time this video, we've seen the as always great looking damage effects. Really good example of what I like to call fresh battles where each swing and attack is unique to the last. No repeated movements like what you'd see in Dragon Ball Z for example. Ooh, a very cute start to a little attack. That little bit there killed me. Luffy thinks he's gonna fire a beam and Sanji is like, seriously you idiot? Fantastic attack, cutting in underneath him towards the chin and then giving an almighty uppercut to that thing. <laughs> Toots and Dorbs! <laughs> How his face continues to totally betray his actual feelings when praised. This story continues to be filled with nicely added extra bits and bobs, such as this. They've taken Dalton there to help him and so the doorway has been cleared of snow, but not the rest of the house. I do like how she's so worried about the crew, but the win itself is for how Usopp is, similar to Zoro and Luffy in the last arc, not at all worried about the others as he knows they can handle themselves. <laughs> These jokes absolutely never failed to get me, especially since he lied so well. I totally believed him. Turns out he was just scared to go after them. <laughs> I love it so much. Still no one has bothered to actually tell Zoro who he is or why he's important to them. Also as a follow up win, it's the same as with Sanji just now up on the mountain not knowing what had happened on the island between Wapol and Luffy, so that's some great consistency. I actually don't mind that as a statement, he's basically saying that no matter what he has to do, he will not allow Wapol to once more rule over this country. That's a powerful statement if I've ever heard one. <laughs> These are always the times I say you can't really call him a coward. Yes, we got win number 2317, but when the chips are down, he's always stepping up like here and being brave, and it's what counts. It's legit shocking how much stronger Zoro is, but it's nice that he's now back in order to share some of the cool that's been shouldered by Sanji the past few episodes. Let's go! <laughs> Usopp being annoyed at being made to feel weak, but kicking the leg whilst doing so, so good. <laughs> he really can be so dim sometimes in the best of ways, he's genuinely confused who Sanji is talking about. Not running on the angry Luffy spot! Also not creepily crawling on the spot! Dr. <laughs> It's wonderful how she, the voice actress, can express so much emotion without us even needing to see his little face. Someone said in my comments under part 10 that they enjoyed me always praising how valuable Nami is to their crew, and here she is doing something to make me praise her again. Don't meet him, I'll take you.
That's three times. Sanji not knowing what happened when knocked out, Zoro not knowing who Dalton was having not been there, and Nami not knowing Wapo since she was sick on the boat and in bed. <laughs> that was actually genuinely creepy. <laughs> The animation on him coming back out was amazingly smooth. <laughs> also though, it's once again another use of his devil fruit power and he actually looks more like a villain. <laughs> Luffy coming to the rescue just in time, but with a more importantly beautiful kick to the dome. <laughs> this collective bunch of reactions to him telling his master plan only to see that he's misplaced the key. A shocking degree of animation in this little scene. <laughs> How come Sanji is basically anime wins in disguise though? Perfect lead on from win number 2337 as we get even more animation poured into a fairly small section of the episode. I mentioned this during the last part, but normally in anime, until they've beaten the villains, they have an easy go of things. But for Wapo, that's been the opposite of the case. It's really good how things are realistic. Naturally, it'd be such a pain to get up there. So this creative method was used extensively in the past and now much less now after the fall of the kingdom. Taking the time to show us more of what happened to Dalton whilst he was locked up and what he was put through, which made him further set this new course for himself. <laughs> Luffy saving the bird like a mad lad! <laughs> Taking this moment to begin expanding the lore, I think maybe this is being kind of mentioned in passing, or maybe I read it on the wiki at some point, but either way, take that win. Such a good power versus power here! Seeing this gizmo in action is insanely cool with a rider providing power at each end. <laughs> Oda could have so easily written to the effect that he was held prisoner, but instead he deep dives into how they beat him, and later on tried to sway him to their side of thinking, which didn't work. <laughs> how Dalton's words here have an effect on Vivi and her own views on her much loved country, plus his conviction comes from Dr. Hiroluk, and in a way his memory and thoughts further live on. <laughs> Another completely different use of his power, but similar to what he used during the Arlong arc. Even better is that after the attack, he's forced to come face to face with this almighty symbol. I'm so glad his memory is front and center here for the important end to what was left of this once rotten country and its ruler. Oh. Max wins to end the battle, the epic music, the final finishing move, the as stated prominent visage of Hiroluk, and the importance of it all to Dalton and Chopper scores it easily. <laughs> Yes, yes it did, and it saved Dalton from having to do what he was planning to. It saved everyone in the end. It inspired them all directly or indirectly to greatness. It's a small thing, but for me I liked it. Not just creating the tool they used to go up and down, but thinking about it. And here Oda made it clear they dock inside, where it's then safe to get out.
And that's what I mean. Then they give it away to get right out onto the top of the surface like this. Also though, very much that though. I'm so happy that they gave him at least somewhat of a reason as to why he sprung down there and knocked into them, as I must admit, it did confuse me. The pretty amazing lie Usopp just casually comes up with about being attacked. <laughs> These two reuniting for the first time since all of that happened. Him saying this to Luffy, to Chopper, and to Hirolook, no doubt, too. <laughs> Even though Luffy himself had done it earlier on, at least he sees how much it scares him. In absolute classic Luffy fashion, he only then goes and does the same thing himself seconds later. running away from Luffy on the spot, but also unexpected art style change. It's actually a really lovely sentiment when you consider how he's saying he was a criminal, but when that sight saved his life, he turned everything around and decided to live helping others. Several really nice views of the scenery and the castle as Chopper sits up there and thinks about everything that has happened. Luffy being absolutely relentless in trying to get this new team member. <gasps> Animating both of them moving through the scene using a whole bunch of frames when they really didn't need to. Huh? This young lady is crazy! Oh yes, 100% Usopp singing to himself, a nice little song whilst making another snowman. You know, I was thinking to myself earlier, I really hope that this is brought up again, that wasn't just mentioned by Wapo, and then entirely forgotten about, and here we are. Ah, now I see. What a great element to her character. That being her charm and how she can bargain really well to get them out of the country faster. <laughs> Although it's also nice to see Vivi caring so much for Nami and wanting her to recover properly, even though we know she spent so much time and energy thinking about and getting back to her home. <laughs> I always like things like that. She cannot, as a doctor, tell her she's free to go early, but she's also making it clear that she's not going to physically stop her leaving either, having made a deal. Animating multiple characters moving within one scene, not once, but twice. <sighs> Dear Lord, he's so adorable with his little tongue hanging out. I do so love how Zoro is always the one to tell Luffy about these kinds of things. It just reminded me of him saying that they needed a musician first before a doctor, but didn't explain why at all, making Zoro mad. This time it was Usopp pointing out the obvious to him. Oh my god, that was well timed, wasn't it? It's way too much for me to get away with showing copyright wise, but definitely have Max wins here for this beautiful moment of anger and sadness and then being grateful with so much animation in it too. I won't lie, that brought a tear to my eye when he started tearing up there. Seeing all of their reactions to what just happened, the best one being a very much still in pain Sanji there. Nami looking real good in yet again totally different looking clothing. 
医者のばあさんとどんぐりのおっさんよバカねドクトリーヌと二人にして One of those moments you gotta pay attention to the background as Luffy stole his snowball and Usopp is yelling about it all in the distance えビビもこれで納得でしょええ、This is great for two reasons, really. Firstly, it's funny, but secondly, it's nice because Luffy just wants Chopper. Didn't even know he was a doctor, or at the very least, forgot about it. Showing this moment purely because the music is outstanding. Really, there are so many great tracks in this one. I have many of them on my phone now for when I'm in the car and whatnot. <laughs> Honestly, this is by far the most shocking twist that I hadn't expected in probably the last 50 episodes, I'd wager. Go on, top of my son! Really proud of him for saying this. My one small hope is that she's doing this as a test of sorts to ensure he can survive out there and that he really is making the right decision for himself, but I'm still totally unsure. <laughs> Not running for your freaking life on the spot! <laughs> That lovely transition there. Back to back gorgeous looking art style changes. <laughs> Goodness me, that gave Jojo a run for its money with their classic NANI moments. <laughs> Learning that that's just what it looks like from a distance when you can't see the rope. Beautiful and soulful music of these images of their time together. Man, that was lovely. <laughs> they did it one more time this arc. Sanji was out cold after his treatment and has now only woken up. Let me know what you guys and gals think below. Perhaps it was more about not wanting the pain of a heartfelt goodbye that made her act that way. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing his whole plan come together, what he'd wanted to make happen on the island before he sadly passed away, a thing of pure beauty in its own right, and they made it all happen before they departed. Max wins. One of the best looking scenery shots in the entire anime so far. You can even see the villagers all spread apart and lightly lit up. <laughs> yep, go on, take another Max wins for that incredible moment as Chopper cried out at seeing his wish come true and being overwhelmed by it all. It really got to me too. Seeing that the bunny gang were all right after their fight with Wapol. So happy that his words have played such a massive role in this episode. What a way to pay homage to the man. And one more here for him, especially since it was done in a totally different and really fond looking art style. Oh hell yes, another for that. The fact that she too saw him as her son. And then a final one for an outstanding episode as we see the flag one more time. What an episode that was. <laughs> Getting to see the whole new crew now together on their ship for the first time. <laughs> How his own personal mission is now being set up already. What he's looking to get from this journey of his and as a part of their crew. <laughs> the various different ways the crew can entertain themselves, here just the lads though. <laughs> 
Everyone wanted to hang out with Chopper is likely just what he needs in this moment to settle himself into the crew. I'd describe him as being painfully adorable. It almost physically hurts me. The punches in the side was funny, but two wins here. Firstly, it's for the reveal that he can understand animals. Secondly, it's because he's such a sweetheart. He was worried when Zoro disappeared and jumped in after him, bless him. I'm not sure it'll ever be possible for this not to make me laugh either. The brilliant idea of what Luffy had in mind when he invited him to join the crew. The biggest piece of evidence showing that she knew he was going to leave and was okay with it, since she sneakily placed his medical supplies onto the sleigh ahead of time. Take one more here for this view as they leave the island, getting to see the whole thing in one shot. Well, that was hilarious and totally unexpected! Bless his freaking heart and soul for all time! He's so awesome! I'm so glad he's on their crew! Wrapping up things on the island for a moment as our crew was left, I'm glad he decided to not leave himself and it wasn't the case that the people convinced him not to go. He knew leaving wasn't for the best. <laughs> Wonderful way to do some world building and lore dropping as we learn about this new location. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant stuff. Now we're seeing more about a guy who was in the anime like nearly 30 episodes ago back at Logue Town, and here we are talking about him in the past. Also, take another one here for getting to see likely a lot of important faces from the past and present in the wider world. <laughs> Seeing a baby Vivi, and of course, the poor old guy who lost his life recently. <laughs> Oh my god, what an absolutely horrifically terrible person he is. So glad Luffy took care of him. Man, that made me legit angry there for a moment. Learning what Vivi was like even as a child, stopping a conflict here just like she did with Luffy when they arrived and she was almost shot at the start of the arc. <laughs> oh, it legit breaks my heart to see how she was really feeling in that moment, but didn't allow it out at the time. I'm glad we got a moment where it was finally addressed and we were able to know that he remembered her fondly still. Taking this chance to introduce a very interesting looking new character into the story. Also though, it's Satos from Hunter x Hunter, the dude with the pink stash and hair, who does the super fast first hunter walking exam and leads them to the second cooking task location. How Oda turns a cool looking dude doing a cool looking and mysterious exit into a genuinely funny moment as he runs away. Jesus, I'm shocked by the sheer amount of lore that was injected at the end of this arc. Way more than any other arc to date, I'd say. It's really opening the wide world now, I'm loving it. Half the win is for the often reminder of how crazy dangerous this part of the world is, and the other half is for how happy Chopper is to be out on this adventure. 
Now me wearing completely different clothing again. I'm saying this now. I don't think I've ever seen any anime have so many changes of clothing as a whole. <laughs> Also though, wonderful little over-exaggerated report from Chopper to the crew about Luffy. So cute! <laughs> it's amazing to watch Luffy just do his thing in life against foes like this and at the same time gather the meat for their trip. to stop at some point but that time isn't yet here and he's still so adorable and I'm so happy that he and the crew are getting along so well enough said so very much animation goodness I just had to show it and then talk over it that deserved to be seen twice that did not only did we get a lot of lore that I've just been talking about, but then they go and expand it here on this group of powerful pirates and what I'm about to talk about next. Then, as promised, we get an exhaustive rundown, the good kind, of everyone of note in the Barrack Works organization, from the very top to the bottom, which was brilliant to me as a refresher. Normally this wouldn't get a win, but this is the third time Luffy has attempted to round up all of the information with a I just gotta kick his ass then, right? I know we'd already seen it, but not from this angle, and unique ships are fast becoming a favourite of mine. Also mentioned before, but how the world is not entirely connected. This guy set off on his own mission and is massively behind on the news. I really think that's awesome. Just showing this whole scene as it was unique to my mind, as he spoke more of ensuring his own survival by carrying out his mission than any loyalty to the company. <laughs> Getting our first half decent look at him, the first time he was mostly covered in shadow, this time it's half covered? Darth Weirdo, Mal Liao, Nick Windham, The Elementator Wars, Christopher Willis, Emmanuel Gonzalez, Fancy Turtle, Kepan, Mini Masher, Marquez, Nazomi, Orkeeper, Otter A. Bodonisi, Steelers, The Epic Commander, Bird Without a Word, Brandon Creer, Brian Bayot, Cameron, Christian Tuasa, Commander Chris, Doggos for Life, Dragonstorm 35, Aaron Winters, Guru Guru, I Am Here, James Tafoya, Your Edvinson, Kevin Elston, Comfoik, Kylie Wobb, Lisa Marie Timp, Luis Minito, Magnus, Mr. Mansu, Lightly Winter, Peter Milligan, Ruby Rose, Satakayari, Zion 44, Sean, The 100s, Tiger Lily Warrior, Sumi Bito, A Joker, Alexander Schwartz, Ali 50, Amadillo, Brainless Ben, Cecilia, Cedric, Cloud Garden, Dante Soul, Dark Lord Bloody Soul, Death the Kid 123, Devon, Dragon Defender, Esso, Garrett Vermish, Gibbs, Hope to Lose Ritter, Israel Caldera, Jason Davies, John John, Jaffa 6263, Kelnock, Kevin Nelta, Kevin 102, Knuckle Duster, Kai 158, Kyle Jones, Laxor, Laxus, Liam Gagati, Lifty, Lionel Schultz, Marvin, Matthew Blancet, Michael Lewis, Modiverum, Monty, Mudini, Mr. Firecall, Natsu Dragneel, Nick Monaco, Nick Pell, 1928, Ollie the Mighty, Oliver Smiley Reacts, Oscar I. Lopez, Owen Haloran, Q Flash, Ryan DeVries, Sarcastic Truth, Snow, Stan, Storm 970, TRS, The Danish Muggle, Thrasher 340, Vernon Hogan, Will Sass, Willyman, 